Hello and welcome to the first uh, interview of Fantasirama podcast. Our first guest uh, is a big star in the world of basketball, <laughs> but he's not a basketball player, neither he is a basketball coach, but he knows a lot about basketball. He's a basketball journalist, very, a very good journalist from Israel. Uh, his name is, is Arale Weisberg. Hello, Arale. Hi, Adrian. We can finish the interview now because it, uh, it can only get worse from now on. <laughs> uh, Arale is a, a fantasy enthusiast. Uh, he his team is very very high on fantasy list, and Arale is a father and a husband. Uh, yeah. And he uh, can be proud on every every aspect of his uh, career and life. Uh, Arale. Uh, can you uh, hey, tell us something about yourself, like when were you born, where were you born, what was your life uh, like, and when did you start your uh, basketball journalist career? Okay, it's a funny story because, uh, first of all, I'm 39 years old. Uh, in younger. about a month, I will turn, thank you, <laughs> in about, voila, voila, voila. In, a, in a month I will turn 40, but until the minute I'm 40, I'm 39. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born and raised in a city called Ramat Gan, it's near Tel Aviv, mm -hmm. and now I, I live in Modi'in, it's a city uh, 30 minutes drive from Tel Aviv and from Jerusalem, it's in the middle. Mm -hmm. We have a small country, so 30 minutes is like a lot. Um, I started loving basketball, I don't even know who to say when, because ever since I know myself, uh, I love basketball, I went to my first game of Maccabi Tel Aviv when I was six or seven. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Is your Maccabi is the Maccabi your favorite club or mm, not anymore? Uh -huh. uh, we'll speak about that. Okay. We'll speak about that. Okay. Uh, I, my, one of my first memories of basketball is uh, the final game of uh, European Champions Cup in 1989. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember that uh, Maccabi, Maccabi had a, a historic season. They were. Uh, 12 wins and two losses. They beat everyone 12 nothing, and they lost twice to Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And then in the final four, Maccabi beat Aris, and Hugo Plastica uh, beat Barcelona. And everybody in Israel was sure that, okay, Maccabi is the winner of the trophy. And then came Hugo Plastica, which nobody expected, with Kuko, Traja, Ivanovic, those guys. And they beat the hell of, out of Maccabi. And I remember myself crying to the pillow <laughs> as, a, as an eight-year-old kid. Only, only after that, we, everybody understood how big was the uh, Yugoplastic of that, uh, that time. Um, I started writing uh, basketball when I was 16. Mm -hmm. I had a special uh, bond with Oded Katash. Uh, I was a Maccabi fan. He was a Maccabi star. And, and I went to practice, as you know. And then we... He's not that much older than me, and we, we became friends. And one day he called me to my parents' house. We didn't even have uh, mobile phones back then. And he said, listen, I have the worst uh, uh, official site ever, uh, ever. You know, internet was very young then. And uh, if I want to write about it, if I want to write this, the, this site, uh, obviously I said yes. And from <laughs> then on, I'm writing basketball. So um, it's, you asked about Maccabi. It's 23 years. Uh, Ma yeah, Ma Ma Maccabi was my favorite team up until, I don't know, 13, 14 years ago. But when you start uh, working as a journalist, you, you, start, you begin seeing things from the inside, and you need to write criticism and everything, and the whole passion goes off. Mm -hmm. and, but for me, sports is, first of all, passion, and I couldn't, uh, you know... I couldn't give that up, and ever since I was uh, 13 in 1994, the Final Four was in Tel Aviv, and I went there, of course. Maccabi wasn't there, uh, and it was the first time that Greek teams uh, of Athens, Panathinaikos and Olympiakos, came there. Mm -hmm. And as a Maccabi fan, I, I couldn't sit next to the red uh, fans, so I sat with Panathinaikos fans, and it was an amazing atmosphere. And they lost to Olympiakos in the semifinal, but you could hear only them singing, even in the second semifinal of Badalona and Barcelona. So ever since then, I became in love with uh, with this team. And after that, Katash came there, and Obradovic, Bodiroga, Sharas, all the players I loved, Diamandidis. So I became a big fan of Paul. Ah. Uh, 
Pau is a great club, really, with uh, great, great legends, and they have a little bit of crazy owner. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, a little bit, yeah. A, li a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, before we go to the first section, I want to ask, uh, is uh, Israel corona situation, is it okay? Now I, I see vaccinations all around. Well, it's not okay. Uh -huh. uh, many people are vaccinated. I got the two, two vaccines and I have the, the green passport, uh -huh. but I cannot do anything with it because uh, the numbers of the people infected is still very high uh -huh. um, and it looks like nobody knows what to do. Um, so my, my kids are still at home. They don't go to school or to kindergarten. Uh, everything is, is still closed. They are thinking about opening things up, but who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. We in Serbia, it's a different situation. I mean, we are like the vaccine uh, leaders like in Europe, yeah. but uh, it's still uh, not enough to, to vaccinate uh, a lot of people and accept that a lot of people doesn't believe like in vaccines. That's bad. That's really yeah, that's bad. bad. The same here. The yeah. same here. That that lobby is really, really not good. So, yeah. um, Euroleague also had its problems with coronavirus. What do you think about that? Well, I, I have to I have to admit that at the beginning it was a bit uh, Skeptic. skeptical because mm -hmm. yeah, um, because it looked like they're they, they with the full schedule and nothing else matters and they don't have a chance to do it and it looked really bad in the first few weeks when uh, Himki and it and other teams uh, couldn't play or played with uh, some funny rosters uh, but see things uh, with time things got better uh, I see things go back a little bit in the last couple of weeks we saw it with Maccabi who couldn't uh, make two games and uh, Zvezda with uh, Jalgiris and I, I doubt if Panathinaikos is going to play uh, Zenit and Ceska next yes. week. So we go a little bit back. I think they will have. I, I think they will not have any choice but maybe spreading the games a little bit further and mm -hmm. uh, and the ending the regular season a little bit later than expected and planned. But you know what? We are. We had 24 games uh, by now. And it's it's beyond my expectations. Uh, mm. Too bad for not having fans, of course. But in these circumstances, I think they did the best. Yeah, yeah, I share, I share your opinion for that. And uh, what do you think for the last season? Do you think uh, maybe your league could uh, uh, have some bubble and finish uh, like regular? I don't know if they could finish it in a regular way. Mm -hmm. um, I was sure at the beginning that they will do everything they can do to 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 get the season over, you know, to to have a champion and to have a decisive moment. Uh, but when they the their strategic uh, decision was it's everyone playing or nobody, they had no choice. I think it was a mistake because you see other leagues Me too. in football, in basketball, in the NBA, of course, uh, everybody came to some ending. Um, I think it was a mistake, and I feel sorry for Anadolu FS mainly. Me too. Me too for for FS in Euroleague and for Partizan, our our Serbian club in Euro Cup. I think Partizan could win it easily. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess I, I guess they had a very big chance. They had extreme chance. Yes. Uh, let's go like officially now to Euroleague. Uh, what uh, what are your big uh, it's, it has been 24 rounds uh, this year, and uh, what's your comment on everything now that happened until now in Euroleague? Well, w w once you see the teams play without uh, without fans, mm -hmm. uh, things change. You see the the teams with the biggest, uh, with the loudest home arenas, with the with the hottest fans, uh, they struggle. Uh, we see Maccabi, for example. Okay, Maccabi is not as strong as it be as it was last year, but uh, Yad Eliyahu, the home uh, arena of Maccabi, is just another arena when there are no fans, and they lost many close games, uh, which I, I'm sure they would have won with the atmosphere of the fans. Uh, you see other teams too, uh, Jalgiris, Panathinaikos, the teams with the biggest 
uh, with the biggest number of fans, and not only number, but the loudest fans are struggling more than others. Uh, but there are other perspectives for this. Uh, you see uh, teams going ups and downs in a very in a very extreme way. You remember uh, uh, Real Madrid at the beginning of the mm -hmm. season. You see CSKA, what they're doing now. You know, it, it's like waves after waves, and you don't know who's going to be on top in the in the decisive moment. Yeah. Uh, and what do you think, like, who are the biggest surprises for you as a club and as a player also? Um, as a club, I would have to say uh, Bayern and Zenit. Um, the it's, same. it's great seeing them. It's great seeing them uh, play great basketball uh, with very good and creative coaches, which is probably uh, the key for success, especially in the EuroLeague. You see always the teams with the best coaches are the teams that go all the way. Uh, they play hard fans. They are very, very aggressive. And, uh, and you see that they have, they, they have built their chemistry. And uh, in such a season when the bigger clubs uh, struggle, it's a very big chance for these kind of teams. Um, so th these are the good surprises. Um, the, the, the bad surprise, of course, is Chimki. Um, to begin with, their, uh, the, the way they, they, they built their roster was quite strange because in a team you have Alexis Shved, and of course he's more than half of the team, you don't need Eric McCollum, and if you have Shved and Eric McCollum, you don't need three big guys like Devin Booker, uh, Greg Monroe, and Jordan Mickey because <laughs> they're not going to get any passes. <laughs> um, so it, it was bad to begin with, and with the coronavirus there, they started the season with so many losses, so it's a big, uh, big disappointment from this team. And, and, uh, do you agree with me? Uh, I think that him, he didn't have... Uh, I think they were fair. Uh, other clubs, like, they had the right to delay their games. Himki was like, also, they had the right to delay their games, but they had the players in the ro uh, roster, and uh, they played with the youngers, youngsters, half of the team, youngsters, half of the team, while other clubs delayed their games. I I'm not saying, like, it's something not... It's something that wasn't fair for me to see Himki... Uh, struggling like that while other clubs delay their games. We we didn't know at the start. We didn't know really uh, the propositions. They changed something in the middle of the in the start of the season, and uh, it was a uh, uh, to to sum this question. Do you uh, agree with me that Himki would have more wins if they uh, uh, later if they played their games later? Yes, of course. Himki are the biggest victims of this uh, situation because uh, if you remember at the beginning of the season they said that teams who cannot show up to games because they don't have enough players will get technical losses. Yes. So they went and played because they didn't want to get the technical losses. It was a mistake to begin with by the EuroLeague and they, they fixed the mistake but it was too late for Himki because if yes. Himki wouldn't show up they would have gotten the postponed games and I'm sure they would have won at least one or more uh, games. Mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe the whole season would would have looked different for them. And what do you think uh, uh, about let's let's talk about some Euroleague actual teams? What do you think about Fenner's rise, rise to the top uh, of the table? Look, it, it's amazing. It's amazing to see uh, how one tiny change can change the whole team. They were so bad. They played. They were miserable. Really, I, yeah, I felt yes. sorry for them. I felt sorry for Igor Kokoshkov, who, who took a very, very dangerous job by replacing Zelko Obradovic. And at the, the same moment that they signed uh, Marco Guduric, it yeah. changed everything. Because not only Guduric is a good player and he's playing good from the first moment, it brought a lot of balance to the team. Yes. Uh, the, the defense is not, uh, the, the backcourt defense is not only on Nando De Colo, so he has more freedom. And Deshaun Pierre is playing in the power forward position, which is much more suitable for him in the Euroleague. And Vesely is getting... Uh, yes, Vesely. All, is all looking all like Jan Vesely. Form, yes. So, so it's amazing to see that. Um, I don't know if they can go all the way. I have an immediate suspect for, uh, for the team who's going to be the Cinderella in the playoffs. <laughs> and it's not Fener. 
it's it's not even in the same continent like Finnair, but it's in the same city. I guess you know who I'm talking about. Yes. yes. <laughs> FS, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, FS, FS is a, is an amazing story um, because you know, like we said earlier, they were the biggest victims of of the of the pandemic uh, last year because it, it looked like they are going to have an histo uh, historical season. And they made a, a very interesting move. They said, okay, the, the guys who were stopped in the middle of their uh, peak, they are, they are supposed to have, uh, they, they need to get the, the chance to, to complete uh, the journey, and they will be the most hungry people to do that, and the right people. But everything went upside down with Larkin and, the, and his injuries and his operations, and... Even when he came back, you remember he had coronavirus, and then he had yes. the national team, and he got injured again, and things went too slow. And uh, Dunstone and Simon are not uh, not getting any younger. Mm -hmm. And Mitic, Fasa Mitic, had some problems at the beginning of the season without Larkin. It's amazing to see how how better he is when Larkin is next to him. Yes, he has more space. But now, yeah. Uh, it's easier. It's easier when the when the opponent puts their uh, their best uh, defenders on Larkin. You have much more freedom. Yes. And it, it looks like they are on their on their way up. They want. I guess they won't catch the, the number one, two, three, or even four positions. Hardly. Uh, but it doesn't matter. They are going to be the nightmare of the uh, of the teams from the upper side of the table in the playoffs because. The home advantage means nothing. There are no fans, so you know, not, not, it, it means nothing. And the bigger teams from the first positions are not as dominant as they, as they were last year or the year before. So I see teams trying not to face FS in the playoffs. Yeah, you, I, I totally agree on this with you. FS would be a, not really a nightmare for a, a, anyone who, who draws them. It, it, it will be a, a hard, a hard task. Uh, uh, let me ask you, what do you think about the refs for now in Euroleague? Was, by your your opinion, were there some games that refs decided? Obviously, uh, and it's it, it always it always happens when there are too many close games, then mm -hmm. one decision or one call or miss call uh, can decide everything. I love the fact that the Euroleague uh, is uh, brave enough to admit when a ref makes a mistake after the game. You know, it, it doesn't mean anything because you don't change yes. the score. Yes. But it's important to it's important to have this uh, this kind of uh, say. Um, I think the refs are okay. Usually, in my columns, I never write about refs. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I, I think they don't dis really decide. They don't decide the games. Okay, they have mistakes, and some of their calls uh, might be the ones who, who, who make the final uh, arrangement of the game. Mm -hmm. But they don't really decide the, the game in a whole. Yeah, like in the last few weeks, there there were some like questionable decisions. So I'm asking you just because of that. But yeah. I also can agree with you, not not hundred percent, but I I can agree that uh, uh, refs are not the decisive uh, uh, like factor in the early games, and especially this season they are not they are really on the top level. And yeah, you, you know that there's no big pressure on them from the fans, yeah. so <laughs> it's good for them. It's totally... it's bad for the coaches because they hear everything, and there are many technical fouls technical, for that. Yes. So <laughs> like. You, it's it's a totally different thing when the uh, there are uh, like people in the uh, in the arena and without for the refs. <laughs> I yes. mean, a, as someone who who went to a lot of games, really refs uh, people had impact on some uh, bad or good decisions. It depends now. <laughs> like, yes. And uh, what do you think about... Especially in your city. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in Belgrade. <laughs> uh, have you been in Belgrade? No, I, I didn't. When, and, uh, when the corona that's my next mission. <laughs> when the corona situation finishes, yes. like definitely you must come to Belgrade at least on one game of Partizan or Red Star, doesn't matter. But, or both together. <laughs> or both together, like to compare who's better, who's louder, and etc. Uh, 
What do you think about uh, CSKA's uh, problems now with Milutinov out for th- maybe for the rest of the season? Maybe he will come back at the end, at the final four, if, <laughs> if they go. I, I believe they will go on final four. And uh, like uh, James is back, but he went to America. Uh, he will come back and he will probably be current quarantined, I guess. Yeah, I don't know about the quarantine, but uh, Ceska, you know, it was, let's go three weeks back. They looked like everything is working their way. Uh, I was asked uh, in a radio show in Israel before the season started, uh, what's my bet? Who's going to win the early? And I said Ceska because mm-hmm. I believe that their uh, balance between James and, and Clyburn in the backcourt with Toko and Milutinov inside, uh, was ideal with the two this on the lines, of course. But uh, just look what happened in the last three weeks. They lost Milutinov. Uh, you said uh, what you said about Mike. Uh, Clyburn is struggling to to return from an injury for uh, like it's like uh, six weeks or seven weeks now. Uh, Toko, I think his injury is not uh, long term, so he will be but... yeah yeah he will be back in a week or two. Uh, but they're in a very big problem. Uh, they they were a little bit uh, they they were a little bit gambling uh, with their uh, roster building. It's not as deep as it was uh, in recent years. They went for the best players in almost every position. Uh, Mike, uh, Will, uh, Toko, and Milutinov are definitely the the best or one of the best in their positions. But when they lose one of them, they don't have a solid uh, uh, substitutes. So. They have a problem. I don't know where this is, this thing is going to go, um, and it it depends a lot on their uh, opponent in the playoffs, because later you know in the final four, Ceska knows that better than anyone. In the final four, everything can happen, and uh, many many times they were the best team uh, in Europe, and then they fell in the final four. Maybe this time it will be the opposite. We hope so. I mean, I I, I hope so, and I I hope you hope so. Because uh, they are a really good team, and it's it's bad. Yes, they, uh, they lost two league games, uh, like in their Vitable League. I think they lost two games in a row against Zelena Gora and uh, Kalev. Yes. Is it Kalev? Maybe yeah. it. I, yes, yes, it is. Yes. Uh, uh, what do I need to ask you more about your league? Um, do you do you have some team uh, for who you in top eight right now? Uh, for which you think uh, they will not pass to top eight, like in in the final of the regular season? Do you have some team like who you think that will not pass to playoffs? That will drop down and, and go down. Uh, yes, outside yes. the playoffs. Yes. Well, th- there is a big battle there in, in the in the middle of the the table, um, and I'm not sure who's gonna win it and and go to the third, to the playoffs. Uh, and we see many teams with those uh, ups and downs. It's hard to say. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed by Milan and Bayern and Zenit, and I'm sure they will be inside. Uh, and looking at the table, mm, it's, it looks like it's done. You know, Barca, CSKA, Milano, Real, uh, Bayern, Fener, Zenit, FS. I don't see any one of them going down. Uh, Valencia. Uh, has a chance to you know to bounce back and go up, but it will be very difficult to take one of these teams out. So there's always a change uh, in the last few weeks, but uh, I don't see who's going to drop down. I, I will be surprised if this time it's going to happen, and I'm sure it's going to happen, but I have no idea it's going to be. Oh, okay, let's go to our second segment of uh, our show, and it's fantasy. <laughs> Fantasy. Don't or... jinx me, man. Don't <laughs> jinx me. I was I was up uh, about two months ago, and you wrote something in our uh, Facebook group, and then I dropped down like 200 spots <laughs> in a week. So be careful. <laughs> uh, just to mention uh, once again, uh, Arale's team, Kata Sheffer, is currently currently the 11th team, if I'm not wrong. 12th. 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 Yeah. 12th team. I dropped one spot down last week. <laughs> 12th team in the whole Euroleague. Uh, First question in this section, uh, when did you start playing fantasy? 
and how? In the first day, in the first day of, uh, of <laughs> fantasy. You're the, you're, the guy, <laughs> you're the guy who needs to be in our show. You're, you deserve to be in our first interview. <laughs> yeah, I, I got addicted to this game and uh, I got lucky because, you know, you know, I love basketball so much and this is my, uh, this is my job too. So everything goes, all pieces go together. And it helps me to be to be very informed and up to date with everything that happens in Euroleague. And I, I try to keep up with all the possible reports and information about who's injured, who's not, who who is diagnosed with uh, Corona now. So uh, so it's a very big addiction. I'm obsessed. I admit, um, but <laughs> okay, nice I enjoy it. So, it's yeah, nice, but I enjoy it. Uh... Was this your first like big success in fantasy, your current position? No, no, no. I, I think it was 2008. I finished the season seventh, mm -hmm. uh, and a couple of years later, I won the top 16 uh, trophy, and I won the Euro Cup uh, Fab Five. Uh, I think it was 2011 or 12, something like that. Well, you you, you had success. You, you, we you, have big tradition here at the club. Well, we have a big, <laughs> big, tra a big tradition here. And uh, who, who's your like uh, favorite player who brought you the most points in fantasy for now? This year? Yes, yes. Well, of course, Nikola Mirotic. Uh, whenever Mirotic is playing, he's in my team. I think I missed him only for one week after he returned from his uh, personal uh, situation. Um, but I gotta, I gotta say that my favorite uh, fantasy player is Shane Larkin. Shane He's amazing. Larkin. Yeah, especially last yeah. two seasons. And I made a big mistake. He was doubtful. He was doubtful against Barcelona last week, and I was hesitating, and I didn't take him. I was considering him until the last moment, and then I think it was like ten minutes before deadline. Uh, Milan announced that uh, Sergio Rodriguez is going to be absent from the game in uh, Villarban. So I went with Malcolm Delaney instead of Larkin, and it was a very big mistake. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, those are fantasy, like fantasy problems. Uh, before the <laughs> deadline, that's the crisis. Ten minutes or five yeah. minutes, you see your team, and you're like, "Oh my God, yeah. is he gonna play? Is he gonna have 50 and he's gonna have 20?" Especially when you play a league like we play, our league, like. He yeah, went head, head to head. head. <laughs> yeah, you, you see, like, oh, he has this. So, uh, it, it's it's an <laughs> it's really an uh, an amazing uh, uh, amazing fun, uh, if nothing amazing amazing fun for the players. Uh, uh, let's uh, comment on some uh, round twenty four. Uh, pick any two games you want to comment uh, in in a way from fantasy like uh, view and from a uh, game view. Or, or you pick. Okay, I have I have to speak about the Greek derby of uh, Olympiakos Panathinaikos. Um, it seemed like Panathinaikos has no chance when Lodovic to an injury, and I was for my guy Odet Katash in his first derby. Yeah, you uh, to be in this mentioned, situation. Mentioned the, your Katash effort team. What was the, it? Was a game a word of a game of words. Tell to our fans. Yes, in the, in, back back in the 90s, the biggest stars of the Israeli basketball and of Maccabi were uh, Odet Katash and Doran Sheffer. Uh, Sheffer won, uh, I guess, some of uh, our viewers know him from his time in, his times in Connecticut, and then Maccabi and the Israeli national team, and they were a great duo. And I wrote a, tech, a letter to a very famous journalist in Israel. Uh, which we became friends and colleagues after that. And I said, okay, Katash and Sheffer, we should call him, call them in one name, Katash Sheffer. So, and up until now, you know, they don't play like for 20 years now, but everybody knows who are Katash Sheffer. So yeah. I, I stick with that name in my uh, fantasy team. It's great, great. Uh, when I saw the name, I was like, well, what does it mean on Israeli language? <laughs> I, I went to Google Translate, like, what was this? And, <laughs> it said Kata Sheffer, like, uh, and I, you then wrote somewhere on our group that it's yes. a, like a game of words. So, continue about uh, Greek, Greek derby. Yeah, so so it looked like the Panathinaikos doesn't have doesn't stand the chance, 
And I remember texting with Katash and uh, how he feels before the game. And I told him, listen, uh, we have uh, Papa Petru at, uh, at the small forward position. I think he has a great mismatch against McKissick and Harrison. Uh, you should use that, you know, stuff like that. You know, like friends speak. <laughs> uh, and he said nothing, of course. I went with Papa Petru. In the fantasy, in my fantasy team, and then he went to the game and he played with uh, five forwards, with uh, Saint Rus as point guard, who, who shut down uh, Lucas on defense, and Papa Petro at the the shooting guard position. You know, I spoke about the mismatch in the three. He played two, um, <laughs> and it was I I don't regret this decision, although Papa Petro uh, finished the game with a ranking of two. Because yeah. he had two of thirteen in field goals, but he had nine rebounds and five assists, and uh, Olympiakos did not find any answers to to the this weird uh, lineup of uh, of Pau. And it was nice to see Pau, you know, in their most difficult season in thirty years, uh, and in the situation they are in, no money, no honey, and mm -hmm. but. With everything uh, that's happening, they still managed to beat Olympiacos in Seth in the road game, and f and they finished uh, Olympiacos season. I think uh, Olympiacos knows that uh, their season is practically over, and before and b because they they play only in the Euroleague, yes, the yes, second team is in the second division. They're the first team to be eliminated from everything because th they don't have any other goals. It's pretty depressing for them, and it's a big success uh, uh, for Pau. I think the most enjoyable game uh, to watch was obviously Valencia versus Cesca, another team who went uh, in a very short roster at Cesca without Milutinov and without uh, Shina, and of course Will Clyburn, and it was uh, it was a very pleasant surprise to see uh, Folkman having a great game and Mike James, of course, uh, was always when he plays he plays great. Uh, it was, the game went to overtime, and Valencia wasn't in a very good shape before that game, but it ended after two overtimes, 105, 103. I, yeah. I wish for everyone's sake to have uh, as many games as this one as possible. Yeah, it was a, it was a really crazy game, Up, ups and downs, everything. Uh, a great yeah. indexes for, like, um, what's, uh, a half of our league, I think, had Voitman in their team. I don't know if, yes. if, if you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I had him in the, in my uh, league. I had him, but in my first team, I had I, I went with uh, Sigma instead of him. Sigma was good also, Me but uh, Sigma was much better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have no complaints to Sigma, but Sigma was much better. Yes, yes. Uh, you sent me a team. Uh, yeah. Which costs ten million? I asked you because it will be a tradition in uh, area of our shows to to have uh, our guest uh, to uh, to let to make him make a team uh, at current uh, situation for ten million. And uh, I will uh, put it in a video program uh, next to your head, so you can tell me. Okay. You can tell to our fans uh, who is in your team. On every okay. position. First of all, yeah. First of all, before uh, while you're putting it up, uh, my my team's name is Luka Petrovic uh, fans. <laughs> you know, I, I have a good friend in Israel who is a very fan of of Balkan countries like Greece, like Serbia, like myself. I, I'm I'm the same like him, and he has uh, this uh, theory that every person in ex Yugoslavia has a name of a of a sports uh, superstar, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that. The biggest example for that is Luka Petrovic. <laughs> the, that's Thank the classic name for a, yeah. for a superstar. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, it's a great idea to to do this uh, this challenge because our the, the best teams in the league they now have a oh, 19, what? 20 million uh, <laughs> yes. budget, million euro budget, and then to, it, it's like making a team with a half budget. Yes. Uh, it's like playing with uh, Buducnost in the EuroLeague. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't pick uh, Mirotic, uh, obviously, and I had to go with one uh, big star uh, and, and, and to settle with him. And as I told you, my favorite player is Shane Larkin. 
especially in his current uh, in current situation and he's getting better and better in reminding the good old Larkin so I went with him as a captain and uh, hosting Olympiacos uh, which is not very good guarding uh, uh, guards so he's my first pick uh, Jordan Lloyd is my second because uh, he was interrupted by a uh, coronavirus and then with a, a minor injury but I feel he's coming back and they're playing home and yes. uh, our our podcast is in Belgrade, so I had to go with someone <laughs> in Belgrade. So Johnny Lloyd is my shooting guard. A small forward is Howard Santrus. Um, I'm not sure that Panathinaikos is going to play next week, but for mm. now, for now we, we'll imagine like they do. Um, and I have some information about who are the players in Panathinaikos who are uh, positive. I can't say their name. Yeah, you have inside but... info because of the coach. <laughs> <laughs> no, not from the coach. Uh, I have to say not from the coach. I have oh other my thoughts God. of Pau. <laughs> uh, so uh, if Pau is playing against Seska next week, I believe that St. Rus, especially for his, uh, his price, is worth a gamble. Uh, Pau Ford, uh, Folkman, uh, assuming that even if Tesca manages to to bring a new center, he won't get into business in in a few days, and I don't know what's going to yes, happen with yes, Toko. So I think Folkman is a is a safe bet. Mustafa Fall um, was everyone's favorite at the beginning of the season, and then went down, and now he's very very cheap. He's one point four. Like, yeah, yeah, he was like two and a half or something yes, like that yes, uh, yes. at some point. Uh, and he didn't forget how to play basketball. I believe he will go up again. I don't know if the same level like he was in the first round of the EuroLeague, but I believe he will get better. He, I think he had a 20 game against Milan, mm -hmm. and I think he has a good matchup with Bayern, so he's worth a bet. Um, the next two players I'm not really very uh, excited <laughs> about, but I had to go with yeah. some uh, cheap players. So Carlos Alothen of Real Madrid. Okay, he, he's he's good in the last two games. He's good for yes, his price. Yes. yes, for his price he's very good. You know, like like we had Zaitsev at the beginning of the season. Yeah. <laughs> so he's the Zaitsev of, of Real with La Provitola. I don't know if he, he will be back in time for, for their game in Valencia. And after the Copa del Rey games, and Jeffrey Taylor where is out, so I believe he's worth a bet. Uh, and other players from the cheapest uh, prices is uh, Valiev of Himki, yes. because they play with seven, eight players. Okay, Jordan Mickey is back, but he can have uh, an eight, ten, twelve game. Yes, good so game. that's fine. Uh, good game for good his enough. Price. <laughs> yes, and the last one I picked uh, Brandon Davies. Uh, for several reasons. First of all, he came back in a very positive way from his injury. He's playing good as in, and he's very dominant in, in Barca. They are playing at home against Jalgiris. Sharas against Jalgiris is always uh, fun. And Davis, of course, himself for Sharas in Jalgiris and uh, taking players against their exes is always good. Yes, uh, especially and this other than that, yes. Yes, and other than that, uh, centers do very big numbers against Jogiris, so Davis is a very interesting choice. Yes. It will be interesting in the next show. I don't know who will be our guest, but it will be interesting <laughs> like to to show your team and see see how it did. But I, I, it's a good team, really. It, it can be better than some of 15 million. It's fantasy. <laughs> I just hope it won't be better than my first team because that's going to be very, very frustrating for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I wanted also to ask you, uh, uh, how's the feeling when you are so uh, high, highly ranked? Do you uh, do you get mad sometimes? Like what? When some bad player, when some pl player plays bad, are you angry? What do you do? How do you? Uh, how do you? Uh... Yeah. Take I don't it. have I don't have hairs to, to, to take out, <laughs> but if I had, I I would. Um, yeah, yeah. It, when when you play for something, when you play for the title, and I hope I'm gonna play for the title this year, it becomes even more interesting and more important than the games. Um, as a Pau fan, I have to say that although Papa Petro had only two, I I lived in peace with that because Panathinaikos won the derby. But, uh, for example, when I watched uh, Valencia-Cesca 
and I saw that many other managers in the in the top uh, of the table had Mike James as captain, which I didn't. I I, I went with Mirotic, and others went with Fogtman, and I didn't. I, I was like, okay, just don't don't go to overtime. Don't go to overtime. They went to overtime. I said, okay, don't go to a second overtime. They did, uh, and they, it was very frustrating. But in the last uh, 30 seconds of the of the second overtime, uh, they lost so many points. You know, Mike missed two shots, and Fultzman had a foul and a turnover, and eventually they lost. So it saved me 10, 10 points from the competitors. So I went to sleep okay. Yeah. It- uh, well, my my question is partly now I think it's partly stupid because uh, I I get mad when I get when I lo- when I lose in in like my league and I I, I, man- I, I like I can think how you uh, <laughs> how mad are you if your team plays bad? Uh, yeah, you, you know on on Saturday night uh, my, my biggest disappointment this week, like I told you, was taking Delaney and not uh, Larkin. Mm-hmm. And on Saturday night, uh, Delaney tweeted that uh, it was a bad loss and uh, we have to bounce back and blah, blah, blah. Wow, classic. So I, 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 I wrote a comment there. I said, yeah, I had you on, fant- on my fantasy team. You owe me. <laughs> so he retweeted and he said, okay, yeah, I was shit. <laughs> <Just today>. <laughs> <laughs> you can take some jersey from him to give us as a gift for our personal <laughs> league. Like yeah. to compensate. Uh and uh, <laughs> the last uh, question for this topic is: uh, uh, I asked you to to take down uh, tr- to to take look at me to take down what uh, to ro- write down uh, and tell us three uh, players uh, who would be good captains in round twenty five and three players below the radar who are good also for fantasy in round twenty five. Yeah, so so obviously Larkin is always a, a good pick for captain. Mm-hmm. He's healthy and everything is okay with him. I think last year he was a, it was like automatic to to pick him as a captain, and I think we are g- getting close to that stage where he plays his best basketball, and you need you need you need him on his on your side. Um, Mirotic, of course, uh, is a very good option for for captain. And we have to see what's gonna what's gonna happen with Mike James if he returns in three four days uh, to Moscow. Yes. After they they let him go this time and there are no hard feelings between him and the club, he will come to kill. And he will come to be <laughs> dominant. And they they are very limited with the player now, uh, so Mike can can explode. You know. And for the three players who are like below the radar for the price, for their price. Yeah. Yes. Um, as I said, Santrus mm-hmm. of Panathinaikos uh, can have a good game. Uh, and, and you know, the, the, always the, the best and the easiest way to pick someone cheap is to go to the teams who have some problems uh, with fatigue or with, uh, with injury of, of course, uh, uh, coronavirus cases. Uh, so Santrus is one. Um, maybe Zaitsev. I didn't pick him in my team, mm-hmm. but Zaitsev in a home game against uh, Basconia, which should be a very, very high tempo game. Um, he can bring some decent numbers. Uh, and in the same game, from the other side, uh, we have someone who's very, very unstable, but it could be a very good night for him, and that's uh, Rokas Gedraitis. Uh-huh. I think he had his season high against Himki. Which is no big surprise because almost everyone has uh, against the good numbers. <laughs> yeah, but Lithuanians against Russians, you know, and everything. I think he can make a good game. Yeah, you you have you have a point. Yeah, and you, as you said, Gedratis really sometimes plays great basketball against somebody who you who you think like he's not going to give them any points, and plays awful basketball when you think he's gonna play play really. Really good. I, I think I'm, I'm considering him almost every other week, mm-hmm. and luckily for me, usually I don't take him because that it, it could be the most annoying thing to have him, and then he finishes the game with four. And I'm not sure that I'm going to have the courage to take him uh, this week, uh, but it, it could be interesting. Yeah, don't don't say uh, uh, every your every picks. Somebody will hear. Every or pick, <laughs> somebody will hear and he will 
he will uh, try to pass you in the world's rankings. Okay, maybe the others will take uh, get right and I will have uh, <laughs> You did it on purpose, admit. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, fans, uh, let's go to... Uh, I said fans. Okay, Arale. Our dear fans, uh, let's go to the uh, uh, next section, which is uh, Lexicon, where, we'll, where we will meet Arale a little bit closer uh, on every, every uh, aspect of his interest. Our third uh, section, uh, which is Lexicon. In Lexicon, uh, you, you know what's Lexicon, right? I mean, yeah. like diary of of things uh, that somebody uh, enters you and tells you. Uh, first question on my Lexicon, since our uh, podcast is named Fantaziram, which uh, on Serbian means with fantasize, and it's a good uh, game of words, like for fantasy yeah. and for fantasizing in any way. Uh, what do you fantasize about, and if uh, that's not basketball? Not basketball. Yeah, like in, in life. What do you fantasize about? Hmm. Uh, uh, well, uh, obviously about my kids. I have three kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, two girls uh, aged uh, 10 and 7 and uh, a boy who's 4 and I just want to see them grow up being healthy and happy and going with me to, to a game in Oaka. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, family really, family uh, is, is really the most important part of anyone's uh, life really it, 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 yeah, it sure. at least it, it should be for everyone for for someone that isn't but uh, uh what uh, what's your favorite thing to do in your spare time except playing fantasy except <laughs> yeah like except basketball anything connected to basketball i don't have any time because <laughs> every uh, every moment i i go to to check stuff no i'm kidding um I like watching TV. I like uh, I go running every other day, um, and you know, being with the kids, it's always there's always something to do with yeah, them, yes. whether you want it or not. They yeah. they will keep you busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's your favorite food? Hmm. Favorite food. Um, I'd have to say uh, a, a cream pie. Uh -huh. uh, my my daughter, my middle daughter, has a uh, celiac, so we have no gluten in our house. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and uh, and my wife became like an artist with making things uh, gluten free, and she makes some great great cakes. Uh, so that's from one uh, one area, and of course you know steaks, chips, and those things on yeah. the other, on the other side of the, the other side of the, <laughs> of the health. Uh, and what's your favorite drink? My favorite drink, I have to say, Cola Zero. Cola Zero. Or Pepsi Max. Yeah. Pepsi yeah. Max. That's yeah, my favorite. Are, what do you like the more, more uh, Coke or Pepsi? In general. <laughs> I, I hope nobody hears that, but uh, no, in general, it's Coke, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to, to drink diet, you know, because mm -hmm. if I'll drink Coke all the day, I will, I will be too fat. So with the zero and max, I, I prefer Pepsi Max, but don't tell anyone. It's only between you and me. <laughs> <laughs> and our followers in the next hours. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, what's your favorite TV series? Seinfeld. Seinfeld, okay. I think I watched every episode at least 20 times, and uh -huh. it's still funny, <laughs> and so many years later, it's it the best show ever. Well, no, no doubt about that. I know for the show, I, I didn't watch it, but uh, so it's it's a good time to a good time to begin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll I'll take it like in. Uh, I have a list of, of series to to watch, <laughs> and uh, it's hard to start. It's like really there's a lot of TV series, especially when you have Netflix, HBO Go accounts, and like yeah. when you have, when you must start and do other things. It's easier not to start, but uh, yes, but but if you have Netflix, there's something you you gotta watch. It's an Israeli uh, series. Uh -huh. It's called the uh, Fauda. Fauda. Uh, yeah, it's F -A -U -D -A. about the conflict. F A U D A. Yes, uh -huh. exactly. It's about the conflict of Israel 
uh, with uh, the Palestinians mostly, uh, with ISIS and everything. It's a very, very good show. Uh, it's a must-watch one. Is it like, is it like a documentary or is it like no, no. recorded? Uh -huh. Yeah, drama. Drama. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Fauda. Okay. Yeah. Uh, your favorite movie? Wow. Uh, favorite movie? I have to see how they say it in, in English because I know the Hebrew name. Uh -huh. Give me a second. Okay. Just a sec. Some Israel, a movie from Israel, right? No, no, it's an American movie. Uh -huh. uh, the the Shawshank, the Shawshank Redemption. Redemption. Uh -huh, yes, I watched it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good, good. Very strong. Yes, good, good movie choice. And what do you think about, like, uh, uh, previously, uh, before, uh, like, there were not so much movies available and recording and. Uh, what do you think about the expansion, great expansion of movies, uh, of their s screening, sharing, and everything? Like, there are more movies today than it was, like, 20 years ago and 10. Yeah, uh, let's go 20 years back, because when we were, uh, when I was younger and I was single, I, I guess I could have had uh, a lot of spare time to watch all these movies <laughs> in, in my life now. There are too many movies because I can't reach everyone. Um, my wife and I used to go to the to the movie theater uh, about once a month, you know, to have some uh, a night for ourselves, and we, we both like uh, watching movies. But since the pandemic, uh, the movie theaters in Israel, I guess in Serbia, the same, are uh, closed. Uh, oh. So there are, there is not much time. Well, uh, there's so not much time. There's no opportunity to do it. Uh, so maybe there are too many, and you and you can't reach everything. Yes. So maybe it's too much uh, for for theaters and and, and like movies, uh, at cinemas in Serbia. The, <laughs> it sounds really crazy, but they are not uh, closed, but not much. Really? Of, yeah, yeah. You have to wear the masks. But how can you eat popcorn with the mask? You have to. Like, <laughs> You have to like open mask and like pour popcorn like <laughs> close, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but not much people go there because uh, for t maybe more people go in theaters uh, nowadays bec in Corona situation because of uh, 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 here in Serbia, like uh, actors and culture theaters, they're uh, earning much less than cinemas like everywhere in the world. But in, in Serbia, it, it's a... Uh, a big difference so uh, people go to support uh, actors in theaters because they don't have much uh, much money during the corona situation uh, yes. okay next uh, well I, I I'm against uh, opening the theaters and cinemas but who am I who am I to <laughs> uh, WhatsApp or Viber what's up in Israel, WhatsApp is the best, is the most popular uh, application, and everybody is using that. And almost no one is uh, using Viber. And I gotta admit, I never had it. So uh. maybe it's better, but I never experienced it, experienced it. So I have to go with WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Well, here in Serbia, uh, there are people two two types of people: WhatsApp and Viber people. And uh, <laughs> Viber people are usually the, the, uh, 50 plus 50 mm, plus people like uh, mommy and daddy vibe and in, in, yes. in whatsapp is mostly mostly for younger population uh next mm -hmm. question do you play uh video or board games no actually no no uh, no board games well, no no i don't get to uh, uh -huh. i used to i used to in the past but no, I don't find the time and the partners to do it uh, these days. Yeah, uh, board games are really, really interesting way to to yes. uh, to do in in your uh, free time with friends. I, I play a lot of board games for video games, not much, but for board games, there are thousands of of good board games. Mm -hmm. So, I I, thought... yeah, I I try from time to time to play with the kids, but the younger boy. He's too small and he doesn't have patience and he throws everything uh -huh. and he goes. So 
<laughs> and maybe in a couple of years we can go back to that. Yeah, okay. Uh, do you watch any other sports? And what is your favorite? Well, my, my biggest idol as a kid wasn't a basketball player. It was a tennis player. Uh, if you remember the name, Stefan Edberg, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. the Swedish player. Uh, I don't remember, uh, but I, I, I wasn't born, but I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I was... I was like obsessed with him. I, I woke up in the middle of the night to watch his games in the US Open and the Snaps Open. Um, and there was no internet back then, so I was calling every night. I was calling the, the office of one of the biggest newspapers in Israel and speaking to the tennis uh, reporter. And he gave the results of, uh, of Edberg <laughs> back then at the same day. Uh, and ever since he retired, you know, there's no one else I, I admire and love like I, I admired him, but I still love tennis. And of course, uh, in the fi last few years when he coached uh, Roger Federer, I became a Federer fan. So I love this. Um, I watch soccer from time to time, you know, mainly when the big tournaments uh, arrive, like the World Cup or Euro or the Champions League uh, final stages, uh, and of course the game of the Israeli national team. Yeah. But games of Israeli national team in football is uh, not a very big uh, success, so well, <laughs> let's not speak I, about that. I love, I love <laughs> from Israeli national team, uh, Bibras Natko. Ah, yeah. Natko, he's, he's a, like... playing for Partizan. Yes, he's playing for Partizan. He's a... He's a magical. He's a magical guy, really, for football and and every other aspect. When I see him, like like when I see you, when I see you, I I, I know you're you're normal guy. You know, same thing. <laughs> same thing for Natko. Like he's doing everything on the field, and he's normal outside of the court. And he's one of the, my favorite partisan partisan players. But uh, there are two different uh, differences between Natko and me. The first one is that he played for Olympiakos, and I will never play for Olympiakos. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and the second one is that his paycheck is a little bit higher than mine. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. Yes, maybe, 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 he, <laughs> maybe. We don't know. I'm uh, sure. <laughs> uh, who is your favorite basketball player, except Kato Schaefer duo? Hmm. You you, you can say. Uh, Either from NBA for Euroleague, either retired, did or not, you can say. I really, I really love Luka Doncic. Uh huh. It it's like you know, I'm about uh, 17 or 18 years uh, older than him, but I'm, but I'm a, a big fan of him. It's amazing to see. It was amazing to see the process that he is going through. He was going through uh, in Real Madrid. Uh, you remember that summer when Sergio Yui was injured no, no, and everybody no. was waiting to see what Real is going to do and they decided, okay, we are going with Doncic. He was 17 years old and they went with him and uh, I had a great bet back then. Uh, I w uh, they had a panel for uh, basketball experts in Gazeta site in Greece uh -huh. and they asked everyone to, to say what's going to happen this season and I said, Real Madrid is going to win the Euroleague and Luka Doncic will be the MVP. MVP. It was shortly after the Slovenia won the Eurobasket. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Real Madrid won it and Luka was the MVP. So, yeah, I I'm a big admirer of him. Uh, do, you, do you watch him now in NBA? Uh, not, not live because, you know, it's yeah. in the middle of the night. Yes. It's a little difficult. And I, and I have to say that um, I don't like watching NBA games. Uh -huh. uh, Especially in the regular season, you know, you know they don't play any defense, and then it means almost nothing. Uh, but I always keep track on his stats, and uh, I hope that he's going to go far in the playoffs. So <laughs> I have uh, I have the chance to see him in the real uh, games. Uh, I sometimes uh, get to see some live uh, NBA games live, and uh, especially Doncic, Jokic. Uh, uh, every Serbian player. I mean, he's Slovenian officially, but he his roots are Serbian, so he knows perfectly Serbian. He's a Red Star fan and everything. Yes, and, and I have to mention two other names. Uh -huh. uh, one, one is Danny Avdia. Yes, he's the I rising too. star, rising star of Israel, and he's amazing. He's a, an amazing guy, and you see his uh, star quality in every every aspect of life. You know, uh -huh. not only on court but beyond that. 
And of course, the other one is Yanis Antetokounmpo, <laughs> which is responsible for the biggest uh, achievement I had as a journalist when I met him for an interview in Athens a couple of years ago. Uh, one of the best experiences I, I've had in my life. Uh, I, I thought to, to ask you about your interviews uh, later, but you, you, uh, I'll ask this now. Uh, what were your... Uh, firstly, firstly uh, to say how we met, like met online. Uh, I was searching for players for my uh, league and on Twitter I... I, I don't remember how I asked you that did I just tweet it to you or what because yeah. I, I wrote in uh, Twitter search your league fantasy mm-hmm. and every person I, I get to see wrote fantasy on in summer I asked and you were like let's go like no no you you wanted to play I didn't like just tell you something I, I was total stranger to you and you wanted to play the league so yeah <laughs> i was looking for the challenge yeah yeah uh and when i saw who you interviewed and on your page your facebook i was like wow man this this is a legend you're you're <laughs> really a legend tell us tell us something uh, me me from serbia i didn't see uh, those players live how how many of them you interviewed at from serbia uh, uh, not to say from every uh, car country, which basketball, or every basketball country in the world, and coaches, players. Tell us something about your interviews, your biggest interviews. Who are your biggest, like players, most famous, and coaches you interviewed? Okay, so of course, like I said, Yanis Antetokounmpo. Uh, it was uh, two or three years ago. I went to Greece for to Athens. For the playoff finals, I wanted to watch some uh, Panathinaikos Olympiakos games, and uh, I said, "Okay, let's try." You know, sometimes you, people in Greece know me, you know, for uh, agents or, or or people from the federation. And Greece was uh, uh, playing that summer. So I went to one of the people in the federation, asking him to have an interview with Yanis before uh, before the Eurobasket or Olympic Games. I don't remember what that was. And he said, okay, you need to, to reach uh, his uh, Greek uh, agent. Okay, he gave me the number. I, I didn't believe it was even possible, but uh, a couple of days later, I texted him and he said, um, okay, you will be in Greece in that date. Uh, we can schedule a meeting. <laughs> and we did. And I was in Athens. I went to the game of, of Power and Olympiakos, and Yanis' brother, uh, Thanasis, was the, was the biggest star <laughs> in that game. And, uh, and then the agent called me the next day. It was the day before the interview. He said, uh, listen, we have a problem. They are going to make a commercial in the, in the gym that is, uh, he was planning to practice in. Mm-hmm. And uh, it will be impossible. And I said, come on, guy. I went to Greece for him. So I, I have to make the interview. I said, OK, yeah, I know. I understand. Give me 30 minutes. It was like the longest 30 minutes in my life. <laughs> And then he came back to me and he said, okay, Yanis will be practicing, but not in the same place we are supposed to meet in Eurohoops Dome. It's going to be in some uh, gym with a very long Greek name. Mm-hmm. It was the gym where he started playing basketball. And I said, right. okay, I just won, won the lottery yeah. by mistake. <laughs> Great. And I went there. It's a place in the, in the middle of a neighborhood. With no air conditioning, it was uh, like 1.30 p.m. Uh, in the middle of June. He was practicing there without a shirt on. And <laughs> then we sat, and he's the, the most amazing person, uh, an amazing person. So he, he has to be number one. Uh, the other two I have to pick, the one is Rick Pitino, uh-huh. uh, which I interviewed twice when I was in Athens and he was coaching Panathinaikos. And the other one was a few months ago in the draft night, NBA draft night. I was trying to think which kind of special item I can bring because, you know, you can imagine it was a very historic night. It's not like Serbia where they they give Serbian players lottery picks every year or every two years. It's the first time that an Israeli player got a lottery pick. 
And I said, okay, I'll try to, to reach uh, Pitino. Maybe he remembers me. And he remembered me from the old interview. Mm -hmm. And he gave me an interview about also about uh, Danny Avdia and what he thinks about uh, his chances in the NBA. And, of course, uh, you're Serbian and I'm Panathinaikos fan. Uh, one of the biggest nights of my career was sitting to an interview with uh, Jeliko Bradovic. Many people misjudge him. They, they see him on uh, on court, and he look he looks very arrogant. As he and he changes uh, colors and, and he's shouting and everything. Mm. But he's such a nice person. Um, we sat uh, a few years ago, and he came to Tel Aviv with uh, Fenerbahce. It was the Devils' week, you know, where they play back to back, uh -huh. and it was Wednesday night. They lost the game uh, the night before, and they came to Israel. They landed in Israel after 11 p.m. I was waiting for him in the hotel, and we started the interview at about midnight. And we sat there for almost an hour, and he was very nice, very pleasant. And he was mainly shocked when the interview was published only a few hours later. I, <laughs> I, I didn't sleep back back that night. And and one thing that that you can learn a lot about his personality it was just a couple of weeks ago. You know, after Katash. Uh, became the coach of Panathinaikos. It was a big festival uh, in Israel, and I had a very big interest to make this festival because I was the first to publish about his move. And uh, I, I wanted to call the legends of Panathinaikos from his days. Mm -hmm. I had interviews interviews with Dean Bodiroga and uh, Jeliko Repracha, and I tried to reach uh, Jeliko Bradovich too. He didn't, uh, he didn't answer the phone, uh, so I texted him. I sent him a WhatsApp about who I am and uh, what, what do I want from him. And uh, one hour later, uh, my mobile, f uh, my mobile uh, device uh, rings, and suddenly I see Jericho Bradovic <laughs> on the screen. And he just wanted to say that, um, okay, I, I remember you from our uh, meeting, and I respect you, and uh, I just wanted to tell you that uh, ever since I stopped coaching, and until I go back to, to, to basketball, I don't make any interviews, and I don't want to speak about other people. So I just uh, want, want to explain to you, and not, you know, you'll send me the message, and I will not uh, uh, get that. back. And, and that's amazing. That's amazing. You know, it's the biggest star, biggest coach in the European basketball history, and he finds the time to call me back just to tell me that he's not going to make the interview. Yeah, great. He Great. deserves a lot of credit for that, and he shows you which kind of person he really is. Great, Re really great stuff. It's an interesting story for our viewers to to listen about Jelko. Yeah, his like behavior on the court is purely for team. He's not like uh, angry. He, he's not born angry, but he's it's purely for team. And I, uh, it, it's funny. Uh, we in Serbia love love every every highlight of his uh, <laughs> angry uh, angriness against the players' mistakes and everything. He's currently now in Belgrade. He's pausing for a year. We don't know where he will go next, but uh, I hope he will he will go somewhere in Euroleague. It's my. I think I think maybe maybe Jeliko needs to find a new challenge in his life. And you know, you know that uh, the, the the club that he is the most famous with is Panathinaikos, and yes. Panathinaikos is looking for a new owner, or at least they say they do. And if Obradovich will be part of a group who can invest in the club and and run it and manage it, and he will be like a general manager or something like that, and we he will be in the front office, not even as a coach. I think it will be an amazing closure and a great challenge for him too. Yeah, yeah, Jelko. Uh, he, how much he Euroleagues he has? Like nine. Nine, nine. Ah, yes, nine. Um, one more question, Alexicon, uh, or more two. Uh, uh, who is your favorite coach? Except uh, let's, except uh, Katash. Is Katash the Panathinaikos coach? Coach. Yeah, and I have to say Jeliko. <laughs> okay, <laughs> of course Jeliko. <laughs> okay, okay, and uh, who is your least favorite player? Wow, like not That's... not some, not personal, like but on the court, you you when you see him, you hate him. Like oh, I hate this guy. Well, I can't say I hate him. 
because I always have him on my fantasy team. Uh-huh. But uh, I, I, I have to say Shved. Um, you know what? Let, let me put it in another way. I, I really want... I like, the, I like Chimki and I like the people in Chimki. Mm-hmm. I know some of them. But I want to see uh, Alexi Shved next season or the season after playing in a big Euroleague club like Real Madrid, like Ceska, like... I don't know. I want to see him take a different challenge go to a team where he's, he's a star. Obviously, he's, he's going to be a star everywhere he goes. But I want to see him one of the, going into a system and not being the only star who, who shoots as much as he wants and uh, mm-hmm. no other player can, uh, can shine uh, next to him. I think it will be a big challenge for him and for the club who, who decides to, to take okay, him yes. uh, be, because the current situation of Shved and Hinky. It's not good, not for Shved and not for Hinky. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, and uh, what uh, do you have some coach who you dis- dislike the most? Um, not, also, not like personal thing, just his tactics or something that you don't like, in, that you think he can do better. Okay, I, I think that at the beginning, a few years ago, I would answer, probably answer you Pablo Lasso uh-huh. uh, because it looked like he's, come, he's deciding the, the substitutions at home before the game and he's making them uh, with, with no, no connection to the game itself. You know, you can score 10 points in the first quarter and you won't see the court until the fourth. Um, and so, and you go, you don't go with the hot guys, and he paid the price for that because uh, players couldn't. Uh, so, sometimes he lost momentum and he lost titles uh, because of that. But when you see a coach uh, uh, surviving ten years in Real Madrid uh, with so much tension and so much pressure and managing the egos of so many stars. You have to respect that, yes. and I think it changed over the over the years. I think the person who brought the change in Lasso's uh, philosophy was Doncic, because look at the stats of Luka Doncic in that historic season when Real uh, won the Euroleague championship. Uh, Luka played like 27, 28, even 30 something minutes, which which was like uh, beyond uh, acceptable for Lasso at the beginning. But he understood. Okay, this is my star. Our rotation is a bit shorter, and I have to go with him. And now you see him do it from time to time. You see, suddenly you see Tavares playing a lot of minutes, Gabi Dek playing 30 minutes. Yes. You know, so he has his own philosophy, and I have to respect that. After so many times uh, he won titles, and he took Real to, to, to the biggest uh, games uh, in Europe and in Spain. Uh, so... He wasn't my favorite, but I respect him now mm-hmm. much more than I did in the past. And did you interview uh, Rudy Fernandez? No, uh, <laughs> I'm hate, afraid. I, I hate <laughs> his the uh, least my least favorite. I I hate him uh, here in Serbia. Uh, every time Rudy comes to to Belgrade to play, w- we hate him. Uh, we go. <laughs> some people go to the game just to like say Rudy, beep. <laughs> Uh, uh, he's a filthy yeah, player. Yeah, he deserved that. <laughs> uh, he's a filthy player. Uh, he's a great player. This season not so good, but he's a good, uh, really great player. Whole his whole career, uh, good, but yeah, he's not. He's not getting any younger, and he has some <laughs> back problems. So, so he's not as good as he used to be. But he's a clutch player. Yes. He's a winner. And when Real Madrid goes to the money time, she, the team will go with Rudy and Yui for the decisive shots and JC Carroll, of course. And they, and you know that they're going to score. So, uh, well, I can stand that guy. <laughs> okay, uh, this was for the lexicon, and now we go to our last uh, section. I, <laughs> I hope you're not like, oh my God, there's more like. Uh, last section is no, yes. no. I'll, I'll tell you a secret. My my kids need to shower and get dressed and eat dinner now, so the, I'm locked in the room. It's the best. You can speak for two more hours. It's okay. <laughs> uh, our last uh, section of our podcast is uh, guess the player and guess the club. 
you have eight tries. I uh, give you one hint and you say one time guess. Okay. From the hardest to the least hard uh, part. Okay. Uh, let's see. Just open the file, sorry. Okay, uh, who do you want first, player or the club? Mm, club. Club, okay. First uh, info, uh, that club uh, has won 19 championship titles of their country. 19. And I can ask questions about them? Uh, well, or just, uh, or just, uh, you just, can, uh, you can just guess one. Just guess. Okay. If, if you ask questions, questions, you're you're a good journalist. You would you would uh, make it come out of my mouth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, it's off record. It's off record. Uh, Nineteen championships. Well, it's not Maccabi. <laughs> okay. Maccabi won uh, like a uh, nineteen hundred. Um, Nineteen. Barcelona. No. Let's go to the other ah. hint. Other hint. <laughs> uh, their hall capacity, arena capacity, is 5,400. It's not some big information, but... <laughs> 5,400. They play in the EuroLeague? Or I, could, or I can't ask that. <laughs> okay. Um... 19 championship, 5,400. Uh, uh, uh. Aris. No. Just to mention, okay. like, it's it, uh, it's a club and it's player. Uh, in this section, clubs and players are those who played or play in EuroLeague and the players are who played and, play, and now play. So, uh, it's, uh, like, just EuroLeague, not... Or connected to ah, they play, they play the EuroLeague now? Uh, no. Uh, just to say for this whole section in, in the future shows, it's like ah, just okay. connected to EuroLeague. Either played, mm -hmm. either now play, and ah. for the players also. Not NBA or something. So, uh, okay. third hint. Uh, it was founded in 1946. 1946. Zvezda? No. No, no. Zvezda is uh, not 5,400 5, uh, seats. No, no. Z okay. I think Zvezda yeah. is 45. 1945. What? I think Zvezda. Ah, is... really? Ah, yeah. I was you're, close. You're close. <laughs> okay, now the easier stuff are coming now. Uh, its club jersey colors are primarily blue or white. Sometimes combination. Blue or but... white. It's not Buduchnost. easy. No, it's not. Uh, not no. Uh, it's not easy club, so you know. Okay. Uh, they won Euroleague two times. Oh. The, now, it, now you're starting uh, <laughs> the interesting part. Or they won Euro, the Euro Euro League League twice. Champions Cup. I don't know how. What? what yeah, of course. Of course. Mm. Don't they won the Euro League twice. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out who won the Euroleague twice. Um, not Hugo Plastica. Cibona. Bravo, 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 Rale. <laughs> it's the fifth hint. So three hints left were their nicknames is the Wolves, their crest is red and white, and their hold is named after Dražen Petrovic. Uh -huh. Okay, the Dragon Petrovic would uh, would have signed it. <laughs> yeah, bravo, bravo. And now, now for the player. Let's see. Okay, <clears throat> Dragon Petrovic, come on, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. He is an EuroLeague champion. <laughs> there are a lot of choices. Okay, you're Serbian, and you gave me a, a Croatian team, so you'll go with a Serbian player. Milos Teodosic. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Your logic is is not is not for this. It's not good for this game. <laughs> okay. I go beyond everything. So you you think somebody is, but not. Uh, second hint. He has three bronze medals, one gold and one silver medal for his country, in every of uh, like uh, not competitions, but like. Uh, 
he won medals when he was 19, when he was 21, when he was 24. Okay. Mm. Also, not relevant much for you to guess, but you can guess. Sergio Llull. No. Uh, okay. Third hint. He wasn't born in Europe. Oh. But he's European. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I have no idea. Uh, Nicolatis. No. <laughs> oh. Where was he born? Where was Colatis born? I don't know. In the States. In the States. In the States. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, fourth hint. You may be... It, it could be helpful. Uh, he played for okay. 10 clubs in four countries. Wow. 10 clubs? Yes. In one club he, paid, he played twice. So I count it in not 11, but 10. Okay. I wanted to say Mirza Tuchan, but I think he was in, in Europe. Um, wow, I have no idea. Played in 10 clubs, fuck. And he, but he is European. Sorry, sorry, I didn't hear. He, he has a European citizenship. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> It's not. It's not Felipe Reyes because he didn't play for ten clubs. No, no, not not. not. <laughs> um, well, I'll just I'll just uh, say a name, you know, just to to have this, the next uh, hint. Uh -huh. um, I don't even have that. <laughs> J.R. Holden. No, no. Okay. Uh, his season career high average index rating is 13. That's it? <laughs> yeah, 10 plus 3, 13. Not 30, but 13. Average. Yeah. And it was about so it wasn't... 5 or 6 years ago, I don't know, his best season. So he wasn't a great fantasy player? Uh, well, it depends on the game. <laughs> I see. If he um, played against Kimki now, <laughs> he would be good. <laughs> Luka Petrovic. Uh, um, <laughs> almost. <laughs> um, wow, well, no idea. Let me think. 13 in rating per season, in, the, in his best season. In average. his best season, he had average 13. Okay. Um, and he wasn't born in Europe. Europe. And he is an EuroLeague champion. Mm. Played for 10, 10 clubs in four countries. Half of the clubs were good, half of the clubs were... Eh. Okay. That's, that's enough. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not Tyrese Rice because he's still American. Not Keith Langford because he never won the Euro League. Alex Tyus. No. Okay. No, but good, good guess. Good guess. No. <laughs> uh, okay. Sixth hint. It can help. Uh, he was aggressive on some of the games. He was really aggressive. aggressive. Yes. Now you think what that aggressive might mean. Like he Who did he beat? <laughs> uh, well, uh, if I say that to you, I think you'll guess. <laughs> think okay. outside of the court. <laughs> outside the <laughs> box court. Um, he got a fight with a wow, fan. No idea. With a fan. Of the other club. Sofo. Da. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I helped you with this. I helped you with this. Yeah. The seventh and the eighth hint was he played for Maccabi two times. And uh -huh. okay. the, can you guess the eighth hint? The eighth? Um, he played for both Panathinaikos and Olympiakos. 
uh, no, it, it didn't. It, it isn't like uh, connected to clubs or basketball. Okay. Uh, uh, he, he was called after Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote he can eat a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, that was for our last section. Uh, let's just ask you some more things. <laughs> uh, do you know any Serbian words? Uh, hvala. Hvala, da. Yeah, uh, which is toda in Hebrew. Ah, toda. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, Grobari. How? Grobari. Ah, Grobari, yeah. Partisan yeah. fans. Yes, Cervena Zvezda, of course. Red Star, yes. Uh, I think that's it. <laughs> you know, sorry. <laughs> you don't know some swear words or something like. No, I I know many swears in many languages, but not in yeah. Serbian. Okay, uh, I'll keep so, uh, I'll keep that for. When private. we go offline, you should yes, teach me some. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I I was like. Um, uh, uh, I wanted for every of our guests who is uh, speaking English to say on Serbian uh, thanks for watching uh, uh, subscribe to our channel or so so I'll try to mm -hmm. so I'll try to uh, hvala na gledanju hvala na gledanju uh, zapratite fantaziramo podcast Zap whoa, 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 wait. <laughs> hvala na gledanju Zapratite. Zapratite. Fantaziramo. Fantaziramo. Podcast. Podcast. Uh, na svim platformama. Na. Na sl e, e, a, how? Swim, swim, like swim, like. Okay. Platformama. Swim platformama. Okay, can you say it like <laughs> in a sentence? Hvala na gledanju. <laughs> No way. Uh, <laughs> Let's give it another try. <laughs> okay. In one take it will be impossible. <laughs> hvala na gledanju. Na hvala na deganju. <laughs> hvala na gledanju. Zapratite podcast fantaziram. Say it on English. Yeah, like you said. <laughs> Say it on English. Thank you for watching and subscribe for our channel. <laughs> Thank you Arale for being my guest. Uh my Thank first you, guest. Thank you. Uh, uh uh toda toda <laughs> yeah great toda for being my guest and i hope uh you will come to belgrade and i'll come to israel sometimes uh to to be my you to be my guest or me to be your guest thank you for making this uh possible and thank you for being uh, uh normal enough normal to uh, accept our call because a lot of people <laughs> didn't accept our call and there were like some stars and everything so ah, no. so thank you the only the only star we know is jeliko to bi bilo to dragi gledalci i slušalci hvala vam na slušanju ovo je bio naš gost izraelski novinar arale weisberg verik je arale weisberg iz vala sporta Uh, možete nas slušati na Enkoru, YouTubeu, poželjno je bilo da se pretplatite, uh, na uh, Pocket Castu, na Google Castu i ostalim uh, platformama ko na kojima se nalazimo. Još jednom vam hvala, pretplatite se, hvala Rale i vidimo se u sljedećem intervju. Pozdrav!